it's a yes bang maximum, the first of this contest. Oh, that is brilliant. It's a hero maximum. On the ground, on the ground, another hero maximum. Starting today, you will play like winners, act like winners, and most importantly, you will be winners. If you listen and learn, you will win basketball games. And gentlemen, winning in here is the key to winning out there. So this week on Coach Corner, we've got how can you pick a slower ball? Uh, fantastic question from Oscar. This was sent in via the Instagram story I chucked up the other day. If you're interested, check out the Instagram at Maxim Cricket Coaching. It's where you get to vote for Snack of the Week as well as various other polls like this one. On another note, we had uh, heaps of questions around getting confident while batting and sorting out nerves and transferring net form to middle. I might try and get someone else on to help that because it's a good topic for another day, but for now we'll just we'll just sort out the slower balls. Um, okay, slower balls, interesting one because they are slower, slowly, well, fast actually taking over the game as the short formats take over and every bowler needs to have a few. But as batters, we don't really talk about facing them and what we really should do once – uh, yeah, what we really should do, which is so again, it's a great question. Um, I would say first of all, we want to figure out what kind of slower ball the bowler has. At club level, I'd be surprised if they had more than one, maybe two. But as the standard increases, it's pretty widely accepted that you're going to need a few. Speaking of that, like Jacko, like how many slower balls uh, would you have? Uh, fair to say, there's a few uh, going around. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a few, um, and <clears throat> I suppose as as things happen, um, new ones become that sort of it slow ball. Like I, I know the knuckle ball's been the the one the last mm. couple of years. Um, but yeah, I mean personally, I've got three, two that I use like pretty much every game if we're playing white ball cricket, um, and sort of one that's a little bit in the locker at the moment. But I, I'd probably confidently say I've got three I could bowl in a game. Um, my my view on it is you've got to have you've got to have one that can go each way, ideally. So you need an off cutter and a leg cutter, or I guess yeah, one one that can go either way, um, so that you can take it away from each handed batter, um, or you can bowl, you can spin it into the like cut it into the big side if you need to. Um, mm. Is sort of my take because if you've got big side small side. Yeah, you want to be bowling into that big side and cutting it further into the big side because that's where you're trying to get hit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, ideally two. And if they're good, shit. If they're doing a job, yeah, you, sh- you should only need two. Um, don't fucking listen to AJ Ty and get 17. That's ridiculous. Oh, 100%. And like, so, like, as you, as you can tell, there's a few, and like, you know, it's, they can if they're done well, they're pretty hard to pick. Like, at yeah. least the, the first, like, the first time you're seeing someone bowl a slow ball, like, you're not going to, you're probably not going to pick it first time. Like, so I no. think, I think the best idea is to sort of like pick them after they've bowled them. Like, yeah. notice, oh, that was a slow ball, and then make a mental note, oh, what did they do? Like, did he roll his fingers down the side? Was it at the back of the hand? What's it actually doing off the pitch? Is it grabbing? Like, cutters obviously can hold a bit more depending on the, the the wicket if you're at the non-striker you can have a good look uh, at the vantage uh yeah you can look at the hand um side note don't get man uh <laughs> while you're doing that uh and then like after that like once you can actually start once you start figuring out the bowler's towels you can potentially attack that slow ball mm. at the death yeah. you know if someone bowl, if someone's bowling a lot of them i've always been a fan of like expecting a slow ball yeah. and setting up for a slow ball and then if it okay. is pace on you just you just react you're going to react to it anyway yeah. you're not it's not going to hit you like you're going to do something that was going to be the point is like the biggest way to combat it is even if you can't pick it or you don't know which way it's going to go set up to to yeah. hit the slow ball and then react if it's pace on because your your body will take over that way whereas if you you're setting up for pace and they do you with a slow ball you're out basically or it's a dot but yeah, that would that would be mine. Um, you've got to try and look at the hand, I suppose. You've got to try and see if there's a tell, um, mm. and that comes down to conversations with guys that have played against them before. Um, yeah, has a guy just got out to one? Can you ask him? Like, fuck, mate, what did you see? Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes 
guys guys slow balls that's sort of the the one combat the quicks have at the moment in, in cricket is if they get if they've got a good slow ball um sometimes you know it's coming and you can't do anything with it either so I was I was gonna say basically you've touched on everything I, I basically had there because my three biggest things were like obviously and the most basic thing you learn when you get, you know you're five years old is just watch the ball as close as you can. Mm. So watch that ball as close as you can. Well, I'm onto a good point of, of even from the non-striker's end because that's probably when you're going to get your closest view. So watch that really close to see if he's just running the fingers across it um, or cutting it at all. Um, and then, yeah, if, if someone's bowling it a lot, as as you said, just set up for it. And then, as Mante said, you'll react to the quicker one anyway. Um, so just set up for that slower ball because, yeah, it's. I mean, it's something that's becoming so common, especially obviously in the shortest form in the mm. T20s. I mean, it's more of, I guess, a, a club cricket thing we're giving advice on because if you're an international cricketer with the amount of tape we have now and you don't know – you know, pretty much every yeah, ball from the guy's arsenal, unless he's you know you know worked on something new or something. You should have a real good idea of every bowler's, you know, what balls they've got in their arsenal. So, yeah. for club cricketers, just watch the ball as close as possible, um, and then just yeah, look to look to just set up for it if it's something that's happening a lot. Mm. The, like, if you are watching that ball, like you might not see out of the hand, but. The revs, the revs the ball will have will most likely be different. Mm. The seam will look different coming out of the hand as yeah, well. Yeah, unless it's like a perfect back of the hand sort of jobs. Um, like if it's a cutter or it's a maybe not a knuckleball, it sort of it won't it sort of won't rotate backwards. But if you it it will look different. It will look a lot different mm. than like a normal pace on delivery. And once you sort of figure out those towels, then you can sort of go from there. I've always found, especially at club level, like the back of the hand one's quite an easier one to tell. The, the off cutter can be a bit tougher, but like if they're, you know, especially if they're really trying to hide it well. But I think for my, if you see it a couple of times, especially at the club level when the bowling's probably, you know, obviously not as high a standard as that that next level up. If you watch it closely, you will you'll figure it out. Club level, most guys will have max two, and they're not going to be like a couple of elite like really top end club cricketers will have like a genuinely elite slow ball um, but outside of that it is going to be a guy trying to do it out the back of the hand or their best crack at a knuckleball or an off cutter really are the three you're probably most likely going to see and like if you can't practice a knuckleball heaps you, yeah it's probably probably an off cutter is going to be your stock standard one to see so um, yeah look, look for that seam to change and yeah and I think the best thing is you want to have a plan for it. Like you don't, as Munter said, you want to set up. You don't want to be like beaten for pace and holding out because you're like playing a silly shot. Like it might be you're setting up to to not slog it, but use it to try and get two or something. So go into the game with a plan on what to do with certain slow balls and go from there. Where, so, Jacko, where do you land as a bowler on how slow your slow ball should be? I know, like, see, some people think, like, if you're a 150 and it's just that slight bit off, you know, 140, then that's better because they're just going to not know a big difference and go through their shots. Whereas some people think you've got to really slow yeah. it right up, completely full the guy. Yeah, to be honest, I think it's, like, at that level, guys are going to be probably, like, unless you're actually bowling, like, 150 plus, that change in pace probably isn't the biggest one, like... Yeah, you you need it's more like deception in the ear, and I think that's where the knuckleball became really popular, is because it had that sort of was weird in the ear, as opposed to it was weird in the ear as well as being slower. Um, so I think that's where it comes into it, um, making sure you deceive a guy in the ear, and the flight's different than just straight up and down. Because um, I've found I've got a couple, I've got one that looks can look like a beamer and like bowls guys with Yorkers when they're ducking and stuff so yeah yeah oh, Chris Keynes sure. yeah, I was going to yeah. say Keynes you just straight to the top of the mind though like I always found it was better it was, it was always harder when it was like banged in when you didn't have time like if, I find like if it floats and it dips you've got time to react like you might not hit it as well but when it's when it's sort of like banged in like maybe back of a length sort of thing and it, and it reacts off the pitch yeah. and it slows off the pitch that can be quite difficult to adjust because you've got to adjust quite late rather than in the air. When you're banging it in, it, it is going to like grip more and that's that floaty one that a batter, 
I guess at that stage, if you're looking to hit, regardless, those floaty ones, you're swinging at anyway. Like if a bowler bowls a half volley, you're swinging. So if it's yeah. slower, you're still swinging. Like it's not changing your plan. Whereas if it's into the deck and you're swinging and suddenly it grips and, and moves one way, then your, um, your plan is going to be a lot, is going to be tested a lot more. Mm-hmm.